This bill adds an additional $70 billion of new inflationary fuel onto this fire that we're seeing already with our public finances. Inflation is at 5.7 percent in February. Housing is up 25 percent from last year. The average typical home when the Liberals took power was $435,000. Now it's $810,000. That is having real impacts. The carbon tax is having a massive impact on people all across my riding. It isn't going to get any better, unfortunately, Speaker. The New Deal with the Liberals and NDP could add an additional 15 to $20 billion of government spending over three years and upwards of $40 billion in 2026-27. And there is no end in sight. And that has real impacts on people of, on the ground. I want to we have called for relief from this carbon tax. We are talking about how carbon tax is affecting the farmers that we are dealing with in my area and others that are trying to figure out how they're going to manage these increased prices when you're talking about drying, when you're talking about fuel for other methods. Everything has a cascading effect. And if anyone's gone to the grocery store lately, the price of groceries on anything is absolutely out of control. It is absolutely sad to see this. We need to stop the spending. We need to look at ways we can grow the economy, start building things, low taxes, less government, more freedom, Speaker. Listening to Conservatives all day talk about everything uh, that they're um, going on and on about that doesn't have to do with Bill C-8. Bill C-8 is a support package, the fall economic statement, that is meant to deliver supports, supports to a lot of the people that these members on the other side of the House keep referring to over and over. The is only party that is still talking about this um, to this piece of legislation right now is the Conservatives. When does he think that the Conservatives will finally let us vote on this very important piece of legislation that will provide supports to Canadians? Speaker, this is our job. We're legislators. I will not stop talking about this issue and the causes of inflation when we're talking about a bill that is adding an additional $70 billion in new, new spending. And I had just gone through how printing money is hurting everyday constituents, how the carbon tax is hurting everyday constituents and getting email after email, phone call after phone call of people, real people who are struggling because of policies brought in by this government. So no, I will not stop talking about it, especially when this legislation is terrible. And at the start of the pandemic, the government brought in $176 million in new spending unrelated to COVID. And we last year, home inflation hit 25 percent. The Real Estate Association chief economist called it the biggest gain of all time. And the government continues to turn a blind eye to this. What's their answer to this, Speaker? It's more new spending. Well, let's have another government program that will inevitably fail, and they'll come up with another government program to fix the problem they created in the first place. What we need to transition to is more of an economy that talks about building things getting our economy back on track, opening up where possible. And the government failed on that as well. This, uh, government doesn't have a, a revenue problem. It has a spending problem, Speaker. I would say the government is spending more than it ever has. But what is actually going right at this exact moment? There's a massive housing bubble. Inflation is at a 20-plus year high. Veterans are still waiting in line for their services. Indigenous communities are still waiting for their clean water. We need to see results from this government. Increased spending is not a badge of honour if you don't get the results that follow. We will take no lessons from these Conservatives when it comes to supporting the most vulnerable Canadians with the cost of living. It was our government that introduced the Canada Child Benefit, which is indexed for inflation and which has lifted almost 300,000 children out of poverty. Our government increased the GIS, also indexed to inflation, and which has helped over 900,000 seniors. When we formed government, Mr. Speaker, more than 5 million Canadians lived in poverty. Today, Mr. Speaker, that number is below 3.8. Next year, we're on track to be the fastest growing economy in the world. The economy grows, the Conservatives grows, and guess what? The Canadians love it.